Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Algebra, Pre-Algebra, Chapter 5, Section 6 in this book. And this one is titled, Using Multiplication Inverses to Solve Equations. And I don't really use inverses. Uh, I think students do better if you break it down. Break it down. Two, three, four. I'll show you what I mean. All right. So do you remember how we solve for x? By doing the opposite. So this x is being multiplied by four, uh, four sevenths. So the opposite would be to divide by four sevenths. And to divide by a fraction is to <laughs> flip it and multiply. But I have found with my decades of teaching math that kids mis me just mess that up. It doesn't work. In their brains, they might can say those words to me, but for them to do it on their paper, eh. So this is what I have found works instead, is to say really two things are happening to this x. It, you can think of it mathematically that this x is being divided by 7 and multiplied by 4. So we are going, or we could say, why is it ugly? Because there's a fraction. How do we get what's making it a fraction? Divided by 7. What's the opposite of divided by 7? Multiplied by 7. So what I want you to do, if you see something like this, is you're going to multiply by that 7. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. What happens to these? They cancel out. So this x is being divided by 7, so we multiply by 7. So we bring down what we didn't mess with, and negative 12 times 7 is negative 84. And if you don't know your 12 tables that high, just do it on your calculator. All right, so now y is x on alone. It's being multiplied by 4. What's the opposite? Divide by 4. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Those cancel out, and 84 divided by 4 is 21. So this is... Don't forget your negative up there, negative 21. It used to drive me crazy when I was doing this for a grade in school, and I would leave that negative behind and miss the problem just because I was careless and left a negative behind, so don't do that. All right, so let's do another one. Why is x on alone? Well, it's being multiplied by an eighth and added to a tenth. We work from what's further away to what's closer, so the, for, we're going to get rid of that plus 10 first, and the opposite is... You said it, minus 10. And what we do to one side, you said it, we do to the other. Or if you didn't say it, say it. Talk back to me, say it out loud. Saying it with your mouth and hearing it with your ears helps put it in your brain. I promise you. All right, so 10 minus 10, those mark out. Bring down what I didn't mess with. 1 eighth x equals 12 minus 10 is 2. So remember I told you this is mathematically equivalent to x being divided by 8. x is in numerator land. It might be sitting a little bit down like it's at a split level, but it's not. It is in numerator land. The 1 is in numer numerator land. The 8 is in denominator land. Denominator land means divide. What's the opposite of divide by 8? Multiply by 8. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Those cancel out. I bring down what I didn't mess with, and it's, it's like 1 in x, but it can become an understood 1. I don't have to write it. And 2 times 8 is 16. Now, there was a third problem in your book that we are skipping because the best way to solve that, you need to learn in Algebra 1, and it's a whole different thing. We don't need to kill ourselves learning that the wrong way. There's a better way to do that problem. Also, um, Section 5.7 is inequality, equations and inequalities with rational numbers. That's also Algebra 1 stuff. We are skipping it. Your book is very honors and sometimes your book tries to teach all of high school math and pre-algebra. There is trig in your book. There is advanced geometry. There's algebra stuff. So you will find from this day forward, we were, we're going to skip stuff. So you thought, oh, there's a lot of book left. No, there's not, because we're going to be skipping a lot of it. The part that's not pre-algebra. We are, we'll do a little bit of algebra, just because I think you can handle it. But more than that, we are not going on. We're not going on to geometry, algebra 2, and trig, uh-uh. We are sticking to pre-algebra, which is a smidge of algebra 1 thrown in, just to get you ready so that when you hit algebra 1 next year, it'll be like, oh, this is easy. I already knew that. I learned that in pre-algebra. Okay, all right, so this is it for chapter five. Come back for chapter six, cause what?
Math is great. I'm